guys, how's it going? It is Freddie, and I am coming at you with my second installment of Manic Mockups, which if you've read the title and if I did a good job of designing the thumbnail, uh, it is Daphne Blake from Scooby-Doo. I almost forgot where she was from, my bad. But anyway, um, I'm not doing her actual dress, which is this design right here. Uh, instead, I'm doing a sort of like 1950s kind of like esque design. I don't have it drawn because I really suck at drawing clothes, but I have it all up in my head. So I'm kind of just winging it from here, I guess. Since it is going to be a 1950s aesthetic, I've picked two patterns that I've actually never used before. The first one, which is going to be the base of her dress, is this butterick pattern, and I'm using this one. Uh, I'm using this for the skirt and the basis of the top. I don't know if I want the spaghetti straps as they are here, or if I want to, depending on how I feel with the mock-up, I may end up um, increasing it by like two or three inches, because I, I do want like a lace flowy sleeve sort of thing. That is something we can definitely decide on after I get that mock-up made up. So we're making this dress, and then to go under it, since I want a petticoat to go under it and I kind of just want an excuse to make this pattern, I'm also going to be using this actual um, vintage, uh, hmm, who is this by actually? Oh, okay, so this is uh, by Advanced Pattern Company of Canada and it was 60 cents, 50 cents in the US, 60 cents in Canada, but it is basically just a proportioned slip so you have the slimmer version here and then you have the fluffier version, which is the version I'm going to be using. So with older patterns like this, instead of having multiple sizes, like this one has six through 14, this one is just a single size pattern. So this is size 16, which has a bust measurement of 36 inches. So I'm actually going to start from the skin out, which is what you normally should do when making costumes, just so you can have your base layer. So I'm going to start with making a mock-up of this slip just so I can get the fit right and, you know, just make sure that this pattern actually fits. I have no clue what I'm going to have to be doing to it, to be honest. This is a learn as you go kind of thing. This is not a tutorial of any sorts. This is a follow me while I make mistakes. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I'm gonna start with this slip first and then um, I'm going to try it on, make sure it fits right. I'm not going to hem it and I'm not going to make any like huge changes to the um, neckline or the hemline until I get this puppy made. That way I can try it on over this mock-up and then go from there to make sure the slip isn't seen underneath of this. I hope that makes sense. But anyway, um, I am going to go ahead and itch my cheek real quick. Uh, and then I am going to go ahead and start making a master pattern out of both of these pattern pieces. Uh, obviously, since this only has one size, there's not, not much I can do for this one. Um, but I think I'm going to go with a size 10 for this for this one, um, just because I know that there's a lot of ease that are in these patterns usually. so. Okay, um, the good thing about these master patterns is that I use tracing paper, this amazing stuff, um, to copy the pattern pieces. That way I always have the originals in multiple sizes. So in case a tent ends up being too small or too big, I'll have the um, other sizes to go back and trace and start from instead of having to do the alterations myself. I just find it's easier and it saves me a lot of time and a lot of um, math because I really suck at math. So. Oh, and actually, uh, it's a good thing I'm doing it for the vintage pattern too, because even though that has one size, since it's vintage, it's very, like, it's thinner paper and it's just got a lot of wear and tear. So it helps to protect the master copy for stuff like that as well. Without further ado though, I'm going to go ahead and start tracing things with my handy dandy Sharpie, which I didn't notice was purple until I picked it up. Anyway, and I'm actually gonna go put on some of my favorite YouTubers while I work, so. Enjoy this tracing montage and possibly cutting out montage as well. Enjoy.
After tracing and cutting out my pattern pieces, I cut everything out of muslin, with some help from my dog. Also, I hope you enjoyed the music selection. I was going for something you'd hear in the original cartoon. Then I marked the zipper placement and the darts on the slip. I pinned and sewed the darts next. I really hate darts, but after doing them so much, I think I'm starting to get better at them. After doing up the bottom side seam, I moved on to the facing. The instructions said to turn the bottom edge inward by one fourth, but I realized after sewing it that I had turned the wrong edge. Thank goodness for seam rippers. With the right edge hemmed, I sewed the top edge of the facing to the top edge of the bodice. Then I turned the facing inward. Originally, this is meant to be hand hacked, but since this is a mock-up, I just machine sewed it down. I don't know how this audio is gonna sound considering I'm in my very echoey room. I apologize for the half shot of my torso, this is the best I can do. But this is the first mock-up of just the torso. And as you can see with this little flappy here, it is an inch and five eighths too big. Just in the chest area too, like the girls are not 36 inches I'm afraid, but the waist is perfect. So I think what I am going to do, depending on if my research for smallering the bust, and yes, smallering is a word, for smallering the bust 
says any different, I am going to move the fold on the pattern so that it's it's it kind of it's slanty. I gotta do research, but anyway, the top doesn't fit. Um, I'm also gonna ixnay the facing part that I just spent over two hours working on because it's dumb and it's not needed. So yeah, I will see you guys in a hot minute after I decide what I'm doing with the top. Yeah, why? Hi guys, how's it going? Um, yeah, so I, I did some like five minute research and a lot of what I found was how to alter the entire pattern piece. However, the waist fits just fine on both pieces, perfectly fine. The bus points sit where they're supposed to sit when I have um, that excess uh, fabric off to the side. So I'm thinking it's, it's just like a, a not a, not a vertical thing, but a horizontal thing, if that makes sense. I did not get properly trained in a seamstressing, if you can tell. But yeah, so what I think needs to happen, or at least what I'm going to do, and now that I'm thinking this through in my head to talk to you guys about it, I'm realizing what I did was wrong. Uh, I'm going to take uh, two inches away. Yeah, I'm gonna take two inches away from each side seam. So this seam and this seam, or not two inches, two inches overall. And that's what I think I did wrong. Cause I, my, in my mind, I'm like, okay, so like two times or two divided by two is one. So I took uh, one inch out of both, but now I'm realizing that actually it's one inch on either side. Therefore it is half an inch for each seam. So I actually need to redraw this line before I cut it. Man, I am rambling, but I'm also very nervous about this. Yeah, that's that's really all I have for you guys, I guess. Just a small update. Uh, I'm really hoping that this works because I don't know what else I'm going to do if not, but I will see you guys in a moment, probably after this mock-up is complete so I don't have to worry about filming anything. Um, so I will see you in a few milliseconds, your time and a few possibly hours, my time. <laughs> yeah. I sewed the straps by turning both edges in by one fourth and then folded them in half. These were basted to the back of bodice. The side seams of the skirt were sewn off camera and then I attached the skirt to the bodice. I also put in a zipper off camera. Overall, it fits really, really well. I'm, I, the waist fits just fine. Uh, we got some pin tucks and the skirt, but that's nothing I can't fix. Yeah, I don't hate it. Um, the neckline is definitely, <laughs> oh yeah, you can't see me. The neckline is definitely um, not great, but uh, I'm going to end up probably evening it out a bit just so it can sit well under the dress, but I'm actually going to wait until I finish the other mock-up so I can shape it around that. Other than that though, everything looks pretty good. The only thing I am not okay with is this skirt. I want something a bit fluffier. So what I think I'm going to try to do is, this is, this is really weird, I don't like talking to you guys headless. So what I think I'm going to try to do is I'm going to take the fluffier, square skirts that I'm going to make for the final dress mock-up. And before I get rid of it, I'm going to attach it to this bad boy and see if I like that better, just so I don't have to worry about uh, layering a petticoat over top of this. With the slip set aside, it's time for the dress. First, I pinned the princess seams and the darts of the bodice.
These were sewn, and then I sewed up the side seams of the bodice. Again, sorry if the audio is crappy. I don't have my boom mic on, but I just ha I just finished up the torso, which you guys saw, and so far I like it. Um, obviously, I don't have the straps on it, but it fits at the waist very nicely. I have it sort of pinned up in a, like a pseudo zipper type thing. There is a little bit more back room than I think I would need, so I think what I might do. I think what I might do is I might sew up. Uh, a size 8 because this is a size 10 on the pattern and then fit that see how I like it in the whole bust area business because it's it, there's a lot of room left up here and then see if I have to splice them together to get the waist to sit right which you guys can't see there you go yeah, so I think that's what I'm going to do now. I'm not going to film the whole like tracing thing again. Where'd that pin go? Found it. So yeah, I'm not going to film that part. Um, I'm also not going to film making it since you just saw how I made this. Uh, but I will tell you guys my final thoughts of how I like it and how it, it fits better. Okay, so as promised, here is the new bodice that is a size smaller. Um, I like this fit a lot better. It definitely has, um, uh, it definitely ha it's definitely not as baggy in the chest area. And I think once I get a properly weighted fabric that's actually lined, it'll get rid of a lot of these wrinkles that you're seeing here. I also want to be very careful about taking away too much ease because I still want to breathe in it and move in it. Um, I am a bit worried because the, the back here does have like a lot of room left, but I'm really, really hoping that once I add straps to it, it'll be fine. Like it lays fine. It lays perfectly fine, really. I just, I'm, I guess I'm just being very anxious about it. But uh, I have decided that I'm going to go ahead and use the size eight pattern for my final piece. And now the very next thing that I get to do is I get to take this off, put it on top of my mock-up, of my petticoat, figure out um, the bodice of the petticoat top so that way it doesn't show through this, and then I get to alter these sleeves. But before that, I sewed up the skirt. Okay, so I have my lovely Venus here. She's amazing. Uh, I'm going to keep you guys at this height just so you can see the entire bodice to what I'm doing, I guess. Mostly because I'm also just too lazy to move the camera. But anyway, what I'm going to do right now is I already have um, the slip mock-up on here, and then I have my dress bodice pinned over top of it where it's all supposed to go. Uh, and I am basically just going to trace the edge of the slip onto this bodice, or <laughs> this, I am, oh, hold on, scratch that, reverse it. I am going to trace the edge of the dress bodice onto the slip bodice. That way I can alter the neckline appropriately and make sure that nothing's going to show on the regular dress. So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, so that's fine and dandy. Alrighty, so now what I'm going to do uh, is I am going to actually raise you guys up just a bit more so you can see what I'm doing. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay a piece of muslin between the back strap and the strap and then I'm going to pattern it to go straight up and meet at the side seams. That way it has a self-contained strap. Hopefully it works out okay. I'm not too used to drafting straps on these things, but it, it, it should work. I also might go ahead and thicken it up a bit as well. I don't know. I'm gonna go grab some muslin though. And there's the new sleeve. So ironically enough, what I want to do is actually gonna look a lot similar to this. So this is gonna be in my royal purple fabric. It's just gonna be a small strap. And then I'm going to layer some lavender lace to kind of flounce out over the shoulder like this. I think it's gonna look really cool. So with this strap done, I'm going to take the bodice bodice off, the dress bodice off. Um, and then I am going to alter the neckline of the slip now. Neckline. Kept wanting to call it a hemline. It's not a hemline. Yeah, so I think this is gonna be my new um, neckline just so I can also wear it with other things. It's not too low. Um, but it's also low enough to where I'm not definitely not worried about it showing through the front and it didn't show it all through the back So I think I'm actually going to Even this up a bit right now kind of have it So yes, 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 yes. Plan of action, because I keep wishing washing. I'm going to make the skirt, slap the skirt temporarily onto the slip to see if I like that silhouette, and then put the bodice on top of it to see if I like that. And then uh, if I do end up liking it, I need to take, uh, take the skirt, set it aside so I don't touch it, because I need it for later. Then I'm going to repattern the both bodices, both bodices. Yeah. Yeah, and then after I repattern both bodices, owie, my hair's caught. After I repattern both bodices, I am basically done with this mock-up and I can finish the video, edit it, and hopefully get it out. And hopefully I can do all of that by tonight. That is the goal. If I don't accomplish it, it'll be all right. I'm trying to be easier on myself. Um, yeah, I just gotta get to work and stop procrastinating. So goodbye for now. The skirt is sewn. And um, so yeah, I am going to do a not so great thing and I am going to cheat uh, in gathering this because when I repattern it, I actually need it flat so I can mark where the extra lace is gonna go. So I am going to cheat very, very much and just kind of like ruffle it to the skirt. So. so my fake gathering is just really sloppy pinned pleats. Very easy.
that is my makeshift pleading or gathering, whatever you want to call it. Basically, I'm lazy, okay? I'm lazy. What purple dot? It's for a zipper. My non seller boyfriend asking seller questions. All right, so I'm going to lift you guys up so you can actually see a better shot of Venus wearing this. And so I can step back and see if I like it or not. Really? It's a cute skirt. Okay, so yeah, this is basically what she looks like. Now remember, could you, well, when you're done, could you flip the screen out, please? Oh. What? Don't angle it, you turned me upside down. There you go. Oh. Don't break it! Content. Yeah, so this is what the slip looks like with the more poofier skirt, and I actually really, really like it. So I am going to make sure I put the poofy skirt onto the slip bodice instead of the tiny one. Ooh, that's a bad sound. Um, I may or may not use the side as a side zipper. I probably will, which means I'll sew the back seam straight. That's no big deal, that's an easy fix. It's just moving the zipper. The seam's already there, so I don't have to create a new seam. Uh, and there's so much ruffle that I don't think I'm going to have an issue with uh, matching up the seams. And it will be fine. I am going to slap on the top bodice real quick to see how I like it. Where did it go? excited for this project. Um, so really the only thing left for me to do, why am I putting that down? It's going to have to come, all come off anyway. Uh, so yes, some final thoughts uh, while I have her here. You can't really see my face, but that's okay. Um, yeah, so some final thoughts on this project uh, as I make my outro, because I really don't think you guys want to see me pattern the sleeves, because I'm actually not going to test them like a rebel. Haha. <laughs> um, I might go ahead and add that while I'm doing this outro. I don't know. But yes, uh, so this is gonna be the final-ish mock-up. I'm going to have those sleeves, like I said, which I guess I can actually go ahead and cut out now, I suppose. Okay, well, I'm not ending this video. I'm testing the sleeves out. Oops. The only thing that I need to fix is I need to do another iteration of both of the bodices so I can fix these sleeves to make sure they work and fix the neckline of the slip and the straps to make sure those work. So that is what I'm going to go do now. Or maybe in like 20 minutes after my boyfriend leaves, that way I can tell him goodbye and help him with his perpetual boredness. I'll see you guys in a minute. Hi, it's Young Oral. Uh, so I have the mock-up on, I have both of them on actually. I have the slip bodice out, slip bodice mock-up on underneath this just to make sure nothing shows and nothing does show. We're doing really, really good. As you can see, these straps are horrendous. Oops. Uh, so I am going to do my best to kind of tailor them and kind of fix them while I have it on. Uh, I'm really hoping that once I have the weight of, a, of the skirt, it'll stop it from doing this because it'll kind of be, you know, weighted down. I just said that. But yeah, so I'm going to get to work pinning this sleeve. Okay, that's not as bad. There's some gaping, so I think I might want to do do it at a sort of slant. Actually, I think what I'm gonna have to do is pin 
this puppy onto there. So I'm going to do that. Here, we've got this like gaping at the shoulder and it just does it right here. So I'm wondering if maybe I need to trim it. Okay, so yeah, there is some gaping at the sides, um, but the position I have the straps in right now fit pretty well. I'm pretty happy with that. So I think what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to uh, cut some seam allowance back from this princess seam here, just to make it lay nice and flat, I think. I think about that much will make it may lay nice and flatter as opposed to that. So yeah, this, this is it. So yeah, that is my mock-up. Um, the current plan of what I'm going to do is I am going to take this off, mark the change on the straps, cut it on the pattern, and then I'm also going to cut away, uh, this looks to be about um, maybe like a fourth of an inch. I'll definitely measure it, um, but that's no big deal, so I don't really see a reason to like change it, cut out more fabric, sew more darts, oh, and uh, two princess seams. I don't mind princess seams. Princess seams are like way easier than darts. Anyway, so yes, that is where I'm at. I am happy with the slip mock-up bodice. Uh, however, it may I may have taken it in a little bit too much. I'll definitely have to try it on with another bra that I plan to wear under this, which I should have done in the first place, but I currently don't have it. Either way, uh, so the worst I'm gonna have to do for that is probably like add a, a quarter to the back. No big deal. I've already like taken off an inch and three eighths. Or wait, no, five eighths, it was five eighths. Five eighths. So yes, no big deal. Um, just a bunch of small changes to make before I actually cut into fashion fabric, which I have yet to buy. So I need to go to Joann's and do that. But that is everything that needs to be done for this video and all of the rest of the stuff that I'm telling you guys can be done in another video. Either way, I hope you enjoy going on this journey with me. I like, hmm. Let me know if you guys like this series or not. I know I haven't even put out my first one yet in relation to when I'm filming this. But I will, I promise. I already had the first, like it's all filmed and everything, I just haven't gotten to it. Anyway, let me know what you guys think about this series and uh, if you think that I could like add anything that would make this more interesting. I really just like taking you guys through my process simply because talking about it makes it easier for me to understand and I feel like I force myself to use more accurate terms and force myself to think through problems more instead of just like, oh, it's fine. It'll be fine. Everything's fine. I'll fix it later. Even though I feel like I do that a lot already in this video, but I digress. I'm hoping that doing these videos will help me uh, brush up on some more proper sewing skills. So yeah, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, I really enjoyed making this mock-up and I'm very excited to see how this will turn out. Uh, for those interested, the actual video for this project is uh, August's, um, August's monthly project along for my patrons. So it'll be there first and I may or may not upload it to YouTube, we shall see. And yeah, um, more awkward talking because I'm great at that. Yeah, okay, goodbye.